That's a good shot. First runs of the Test Series to Clayton Lambert. He doesn't really have to run. Crashed it through extra cover to finish the first over at four for no wicket. Playing a shot like that in the first over, really his front foot didn't get anywhere near the pitch of the ball and he just followed through. Fortunately, timed it perfectly. But really, that's uh, almost a shot of nerves, I would feel. Rhodes, here's a chance. Oh. Now, will umpire Shepherd refer it? No. He's decided not to. In a moment, we'll see why. Yes, he hasn't taken the ball cleanly, Adam Bacher. And just a nervous, nervous call, in fact. Lambert a bit late to react. That's in the air, but uh, away for four. So the second over finishes as the first over did with a boundary. West Indies nine for no wicket. Better stride with the right foot. The right foot's got a long way to go. It's way outside leg stump because of the open stance. Chase just kept the fielder interested for a long, long time. And Hansi Cronje eventually had to pull away for four more. So all three of the overs bowled in this series so far have finished in an identical manner. 17 for no wicket, West That's Indies. Hard. Here's that last ball again. Just a little bit short and unforgiving, this pitch. Not a lot of pace in it, not today. I think it might get a little quicker tomorrow and Saturday but that just ended up as a long lot nearly ended up on his backside as well but four runs was the result out top boucher bowl pollock the first wicket of the series goes down flamboyant shot from Clayton Lambert and Pollock strikes well, no real movement of the feet here again, and going for that shot over the covers pays the penalty, and you just got the feeling that if someone could move the ball slightly away from Lambert with that open stance, he'd have him in trouble. There was that feeling, wasn't there, all the time, that uh, a wicket might just fall purely. A yes! Struck away, wide mid on. That's a good shot. But it did just indicate why Philo Wallace gets out LBW. Four out of five test innings. That's how he's been. Just a bit of wet and Wallace couldn't uh, resist it. But uh, not a convincing stroke. In the air, leaning back. That's beautifully bold. All alone yet, which is <laughs> which normally happens in the first half hour of a test match. <laughs> Out through his defence, the first defensive shot that Philo Wallace has played, and the stump flies out of the ground. West Indies 24 for two. the ball 31 test matches more experience averaging 45 that's a pretty good test average anybody averaging over 40 is doing pretty well over over that many matches good shot from Lara that'll be four Donald got quite excited for a moment maybe the uh, slow motion replay will show us why Well, just a little bit over pitched and wide, but sometimes those are the most dangerous deliveries early on in a batsman's innings. He thinks his eyes light up. And sometimes it can induce the edge. But he hits it superbly well. Lovely shot. I think it was
was the lack of feet movement that uh, Alan Donald got excited about. Pulled away this time. And it isn't a great deal of pace in this pitch. It's not often that uh, Alan Donald gets pulled wide and mid on. Just through the covers, four runs. Just slightly over pitched that time from Pollock and Brian Lara seizing on it very quickly and hitting it just in front of square for four. Well, this is poetry, isn't it? And that length was just off, as Trevor has said. Beautiful balance, that high, flourishing back lift. He just times it away to the square cover boundary. Loves that shot. That's a classic Brian Lara. This one's through, though, between some Cox and uh, Jaunty Rhodes and is four. It was just a little too short and a little too wide. The width is what allowed uh, Shandapal to swing the off. Wanted. And look at that. It almost looks the way he plays there. The bat's too heavy for him. Such is the wristiness in the shot. Bold him! Bold Laura! Sean Pollock strikes for the third time on this first morning. And the West Indies are 41 for three. And the big fish, Brian Lara, the West Indian captain, is gone. A clean bowl by Pollock. What a sensational delivery. And Lara is out for 11. That perfect length. And it just moved enough to beat the great man. Look how close he comes into the stumps. The ball, the seam, perfect. He should have gone forward more positively. Didn't. Got an inside edge. Nicked it onto the stumps. And away he goes. And South Africa is now right on top. Carl Hooper comes to the wicket. A man whose average is perhaps a little bit lower than his ability. But he's played 74 matches. And he has been one who has saved the West Indies on numerous occasions. Look at that top score. 178 not out. Although it was six years ago. Oh, and that's in the air. And it was dropped. It would have been a brilliant catch if he'd have been able to hold on to it. He just got a right hand to it. And that's the second one, in fact, that he's dropped off his own bowling. Fellow Wallace was dropped second ball when he hit it back very, very hard indeed to Pollock. But you see how difficult it is for Pollock in his follow-through to change direction and uh, to get enough hand on that for it to stick. This will go down to third man for four. Very attacking field with three slips uh, and a gully. No third man. So once it's uh, between the slips and the gully fielder, it's going to run down for four. Well played by Carl Hooper. You can see the soft hands that he's got. And uh, he's learnt that by a lot of cricket in England where you need that sort of a shot. Again, he runs us down between third slip and gully once more because there's no third man. It goes to the boundary. And so the end of the 13th over, the 50 comes up on the board, 51 for three. And once again, Sean de Paul moving across in front of his stumps. It's it away just backward a square for a couple and moves the total along to 53 for three. Oopsie, there's an appeal as well. And uh, Carl Hooper, well, he probably would have got a, a silver medal. Well, so many runs are scored in that area in test cricket simply because third man really is a luxury. If you want to be attacking, you're going to have to have the three slips and there's just no one uh, as a captain. You'd love to have 12 men in this in this situation. Well, he's not given much away, Pollock. And even that. Oh, he's crashed that, but Rhodes... Well, it, it did go straight to him, but he hit it very hard. And you'll see if you... You notice where Jonty Rhodes actually picks this up. He's more or less pretty much in line with Gully. So he's very close to the bat, and that cuts down the angle. There's nothing wrong with that shot. 
straight through mid off over pitched and uh, beautifully played four runs to Carl Hooper well I suppose the only place not to bowl if, to someone who's got a hamstring is a uh, is full but he he does play a textbook style beautifully off the middle of the bat well I mean he just continues to break records Alan Donald Oh. Well, he's been punished through mid-wicket. The outfield is still a little soggy. And the ball gets there. Well, the, this delivery wasn't that short, uh, Gerald, and he plays a full shot almost off the front foot. And I just wonder if he isn't really... You know, I don't think it's out of character almost for Hooper to play a shot like that. Nothing wrong with the result, though. He's gone for that one as well, and it'll go to the square leg boundary. And another big over for the West Indies as they go to 71 for 3 and 18. It's a cracking shot from Carl Hooper, and that'll go to the boundary. Fellow Wallace, the runner, gets a little exercise, but uh, Donald gets punished again. Well, Carl Hooper has almost decided that with this injured hamstring, he's just going to play his shots, and it's... So far, it's working tremendously for him. And what do they say about a wounded animal? Sometimes at their most dangerous. <laughs> Big appeal! Well, umpire Shepherd isn't uh, frightened to give people out on the front foot. We've seen that before. Let's have a look. And this is one of David Tabruga's best strengths. He nips them back, he nips them away, he does a little bit of both, and that really wasn't a bad shot. The bat hit the pad, but it didn't hit the ball first. So uh, a very valid shot from David Tabruga and the people behind the wickets. It's a tremendous stop. I think that was a bump ball all the way. They have Donald threw his hands in the air, which confused me a little. <laughs> There's a typical West Indian stroke, the back foot drive from a full delivery and four. Well, the outfield immaculate and uh, no real difficulty for the ball getting there. 84 for three after 24. Well stopped. Bit of jocularity from Hansi Cranier. Little dummy tackle at the at the runner. But only the second run of uh, of David Tabruga. And this is of a slight misfield from Adam Bacher, who once again is called into action. There's Hansi giving him the little dummy. Oh, that's nicely bowled. Now, did he, did he completely commit himself to playing that, or did he just get that bat away at the last minute? Well, this, I would guess, is the perfect line and length to a man like Chandapur. He, he goes that little shuffle, as you can see, it's good, and he played it. There's no debate he played it, that he tried to pull it away at the end, but miles too late. Well... That was a loose stroke. I can't really uh, say that was a good shot. It might, no, it won't get to the boundary. Donald will haul it in. Well, that was a slog. Well, there's a bit of confusion because of the runner. It's often the case when uh, the run isn't obvious and you've got a runner the batsman himself almost wants to start for the run and uh, it causes all sorts of confusion. Good stop uh, by Hansi Cronier at mid-on. That's smashed away on the offside. It, uh, I think we'll have the beating of John T. Rhodes and does go to the boundary rope.
This has got away through mid-wicket. And I think he's timed it well enough for it to go to the boundary, indeed. And that takes perfect timing, but also it takes a good wicket. One good boundary in that over. And a wide, or no ball rather, 104 for three. Yes, yes. Brilliant, John T. Rhodes. Interesting that uh, the batsman, Carl Hooper, has gone and had a word with his runner, Philo Wallace. This is well driven past some Cox, and uh, the mid-off has gone a good deal squarer because of some Cox being in there and again able to get three runs. Through the gap behind point, John T. Rhodes beaten for a change, but he will get there as usual. Mark Boucher does the tidying up. Bit of width and runs immediately on his decision to go around the wicket. Well, th this is Chanderpool's strength. He's a very patient young man. He's only 24 years old. Oh, a bolt. Well, yet another occasion in which he beats a batsman well set. Just slightly more angled, that one. He came from a, almost a sidearm delivery. We'll get run through mid on in the most uh, unconventional fashion. It's going to be four. Well, it was unconventional. It was almost a slog. We saw a, a hooper stroke like that earlier, and it was almost as though the frustration is getting to these. Oh, he's got it through. Rhodes might and does. Brilliant. Absolutely superb well supported by Jacques Callas who uh, manages to pick it up and throw it in three runs come from that uh, sorry two runs come from the shot which angled away he plays that shot so nicely and uh, one wonders whether it wouldn't be more sensible to have a third man anyway look at that brilliant effort lovely little stroke this see he loves that push through the mid-wicket area he's done it once before and got a very good four this time only two Donald around the wicket oh well he'll get four runs and that is bad luck for Alan Donald well you know that anything short and wide the West Indies are going to take a, a go at and uh, they've done it on uh, several occasions today and they've got runs in this area third man there he goes flashes it away it was in the air for a period of time but no third man and one begins to wonder whether Hansi should not consider putting a man back there oh he's put him down now who is it I don't believe it's John T. Rhodes now how crucial could this be well, he's such a good player of spin, and uh, off spin in particular. And I think Johnny will be kicking himself now. Out, caught Colin and it slip. Donald makes the breakthrough. Having had an indifferent time with the ball to date, he makes what might just be a vital breakthrough, and no one more relieved than John T. Rhodes because it's Hooper that's gone and Rhodes had put him down 
in the previous over, so not a costly miss. Well, the difference here is that Alan Donald is suddenly just struck on a rhythm and he's getting a little bit of shape. He swings it away, gets the movement away and trying to drive on the up and he gets the edge. Must be said, that was a poor shot from Hooper, trying to hit the ball on the up. Just as uh, David Richardson was describing, it's not a good shot to play, especially if the ball is leaving you. But Hooper, brave innings of 44, hampered with an injury, finally goes. Court Cullen and Bold Donald. West Indies now, 132. It's, uh, everyone in Johannesburg thinks that's it's out, but it Kirsten, the fielder. It's the first time Gary Kirsten's been on camera today. Pulled away by Williams. There is a man back there. He's not right back, Adam Bacher. He's sort of 35 metres from the bat. <laughs> That's beautifully stroked through the covers, and that'll take Chanda Paul to his 50 and the first of the series. Applause from his teammates and well deserved because it's been workmanlike. He's watched the ball closely and he's hit some good shots in between some dogged defense. And that's the second drive that he's played off the back foot, real Calypso, traditional Calypso style. A late he hits the ball. It's very full. He lets it arrive under his eyes. And his weight almost back, but coming forward as he stroked the ball. Touchy. Swept that away. Fine. That's a long chase for Pollock. Beg your pardon. It's to Brugger. And that's nicely stroked away. I don't know whether it'll get to the boundary. It seems to be almost gaining on the field. And no. Cronier hauls it in. So just two to Williams. And Williams comes down the wicket, goes over the top. He didn't quite get hold of it. The ball comes up short of the boundary. They're able to get two runs. But showing some aggressive intent there. Beat the first man, but not uh, the mid-off who's deeper. Nice looking cover drive there. Wideish mid off can get around and cut it off in quite spectacular style. Alan Donald, but they do get a single. Well, he goes for the shot again. This time he brings it off. Brilliant fielding once more by Jonty Rhodes at backward point. again fell for the temptation well if he survives this over he will get a blast when he gets back into the dressing room if he doesn't he better turn and walk the other way because this is a last over before tea he's playing some getting out shots there there's no way he could have got hold of that that was too high for him to go for the hook shot intact at 157 for four it's nicely played, nicely times. Rhodes in pursuit. He'll have to get his little slide in. He does. Just the two. That's nicely timed, and that will go for four. It's a good shot from Williams. This. A good shot from Williams. The on drive is always so pleasing to watch, just as that was directed, and it ends up going straight to Mudon. Well, Beautiful length, 
and a beautiful line Pat Simcox has bowled to the right-handers when he has had that opportunity oh, a pretty good length and line to the left-hander as well but that's just perfect swept away and one wonders whether that deep backward on, square leg isn't too fine head. that's beautifully played shot but I just get the feeling that is that Alan Donald down there? that shot makes him look a little bit fine but it's very well hit often you don't get that much bat on the sweep shot especially when there's a bit of turn it's not that easy to hit it as square as that flight it driven four Flurry of runs here from Stuart Williams. Well, this really is a lovely shot. Pat Simcox being hit for the boundary. And double bluff gives it a bit of air. But Williams doesn't commit himself too soon. He's able to get out to the pitch. And he places it beautifully. Yeah, it's his prowess off the back foot. Nothing wrong with that shot. Nothing wrong with that bit of fielding either. It's Gary Kirsten on camera again. He must have been very upset when I retired because he was the only I was the only person he could beat in a 50 meter sprint. He's now but comfortably the slowest in the team. In the air and out to Brooker strikes for the first time in Test cricket. The whole team run to congratulate him and does he deserve it? He's bowled beautifully. Williams goes. Well, he's batted so well, and now you can realize maybe why he only does average 24, 25. He's played well up to 30, and then gets out and near battle to average um, over 30 if you're going to get out often in the 30s or 40s. But he's got one ball left. <laughs> yeah, just he better beat him for pace. He was just too late on that. 177 for five. Big shot for LBW here, umpire Cyril Mitchley walks away. Was there bat there again? We'll have to have a close look at that. With the naked eye, it looked a very good shot. Oh, that looked stone dead unless there, unless there was a nick. 178 for five. Well, there was bat there for sure, but was it pad first and then bat? This is nicely played into the covers. There'll be two. Shandapur moves to 58. Nicely driven by Shandapur. Won't go to the boundary. Mid-off is after it. They've got two thoughts of a third. But it won't be. Seeds another one here as it's pushed out into the covers. A little bit short there and uh, packed away nicely by Shandapur. Get two runs. away on the onside oh and a direct hit here and what is umpire Dave Shepard he's going to ask Rudy Kutzen to have a look at this and uh, what is going to be the reaction of the South African players think, it's difficult to tell whether they think they've got their man I think it's going to be a desperately close call this one Oh, extremely good pick up and throw they so fast wasn't it and it was almost as though Jake was slowed down and uh, it is really really close fielding by Jacques Callas certainly worth another another look and see it from the other angle now look at that bounces beautifully well you see it's just before it hits the stump there and the bat is on the line and uh, the batsman's safe Ooh. 
And that's four runs. Finds the gap nicely between Gully and John T. Rhodes at backward point. And he starts with a fiery delivery to Ridley Jacobs. BW must be fine delivery there from Alan Donald. An inspired bowling change from Hansi Cronier and uh, Alan Donald at last has trapped uh, Chanderpaul. He's the one the South Africans wanted. A very well played 74 from the Little West Indian, but uh, palpably LBW there to Alan Donald. And it was a, a pretty fast delivery. Extremely fast ball this, and it seemed to keep a little bit low. He went back as he's done so often today, and this time he didn't get the bat in the road. The ball hitting him halfway up the pad, and away he goes. He spent it a long time there, 271 minutes, 210 balls, hit those 10 beautiful fours, but in the end, he has been dismissed, and South Africa are back on top. One. This is Nixon McLean. He certainly felt that. Nixon McLean had a great start on this tour. 25, only five uh, test matches. And uh, a high score of 11. Still a long way to go. We get some runs here straight down the ground. To Brugger doing the chasing. Brings the 200 up after 73 overs. He's gone for the drive and he's got it away down towards deep mid off and gets four runs. Won't uh, be totally discouraged, Pat Simcox. No, but his intentions are clear, it's up there. And it's a full swing of the bat. Yes. Well, there's a peel. Not out. Well, my immediate reaction was that's out. But the batsman immediately pointed to his forearm. I'm not sure he's allowed to do that. And I'm afraid I think that is out. Or should have been. Certainly a deflection there upwards, isn't it? And uh, Donald was convinced. Umpire Shepard not. Have a look from this angle. Hmm. Could have been the forearm. That, I don't know about, though. <laughs> well, he's got away with it. Well, you never know. That angle now, it looks as if he was right. Hmm. Well, he might have wanted to walk that last one now, he, he might think. Yes! No. It's beautifully bold, though. Great bowling. Who would have thought after those two previous deliveries that the next one would be a slower ball? Very similar action, very difficult to pick, and he was right through on the shot. Only really by fortune that it didn't carry to middle beautifully bold and hit that one and got it away well that is cruel luck for Alan Donald of knowing which end to throw his back was turned now he relies on somebody shouting it telling him bowlers end or wherever but Nixon McLean's got long legs and he covered the ground pretty quickly Short. And some exercise for Rhodes. He's hit that in the air, but safe. I die! Uh, they were looking for a third, but some clever fielding by Cronier, who almost slows down as he gets to the ball 
but then whips in the throw very quickly prevents the third oopsie they were just all at sea against the short pitched mm. oh, that is a beautiful delivery and uh, not the prettiest shot in the world from Nixon McLean I think is obviously in a bit of pain and upset yes clearly unsettled by Alan Donald's aggressive approach towards him it's not so easy when you're a big guy sometimes to duck and get under those short pitch deliveries come off the pad two leg buys Catch? No. But optimistic, but he's not dealing with this uh, line of attack at all well. Oh, he's got something on that. And it's going to go very fine. slides off the outside half of the bat and it's going to bring him four runs pulled away more important runs and that's a good chase from Donald tremendous chase good stuff He's bowled 18 overs today, but uh, hasn't dulled his enthusiasm with that incredible effort. It's nicely timed. Rhodes will chase. And I think we'll get there with the slide. Yes. Another good fielding effort. Cullis. Pulled away to mid on and out. Well, I was looking in the wrong direction for a moment. I was looking to mid wicket, but it went to mid on. Cranier takes the catch one handed, and Cullis gets his name on the scoreboard. Well, wasn't that casual? When Kansi Cranier started to move backwards towards the ball, I got the feeling he thought it was way over his head. And then he just put up that right hand. Even the cameraman got a little bit fooled. <laughs> but he puts up a right hand and away goes Jacobs for 14. Um, he spent a long time there and he really performed a useful function. Be the newcomer who just arrived today, Raul Lewis. There's a hook shot straight over the keeper for very frustrating for anybody who bowls a bouncer very satisfying for a tail ender who feels that it's actually really not his job to have them flying around his nose and then walking forward slower ball that means that Alan Donald had signaled it That's the second day's play here's the first ball of the second day of this first oh, test match out. and it's stroked nicely point. enough down to a deepish mid-off and this really is quite interesting again same shot same fielder Tony Cozier are you a bit surprised to see some Cox bowling first up Good morning, Trevor, and uh, good morning to everyone. In fact, uh, I think everyone would be surprised uh, that Pat get Simcox gets a ball which is just 10 overs old for the first uh, over of the day when you've got Pollock and uh, Donald in your side. A slip, a forward short leg, and a short mid-wicket are the attacking fieldsmen, as it were. And that 
It's the short mid wicket that does the fielding there. And Simcock starts with the maiden, first over of the day. Being the main strike bowler, of course, Alan Donald has uh, most often the right to pick which side he would want to bowl from, and he prefers to bowl from the golf course end. So to get him down that end, this is in the air and might be a catch, or it might... Oh, he's dropped it. Gary Kirsten down there at fine leg, and he doesn't drop many, and Alan Donald won't be amused. Well, he had plenty of time to sight it. It went very high in the air. No problems for him. He gets there, both hands to it, and really should have held on. That's a straightforward catch for any deep fielder. Oh, that was a nasty one. That, uh, I think that was helmet. Or visor. Made a nasty sound. Well, he's been hit on the inside of the thigh by Donald and hasn't shown any sort of reaction. He's been now cracked on the helmet. And again, Nixon McLean stands up straight and takes it. Yeah, that was right on the scone, as they say. And he's caught, is he? Yes, must be. Well, that was good bowling by Sean Pollock. He softened up his man, and then he produced one that looked like the slower ball, well up to the batsman, and he was reaching and feeling for it. Got the edge, it carried through to Mark Voucher, and uh, Nixon McLean is out. The first wicket of the second day has fallen. Perhaps he should have just taken a little time to compose himself after that blow on the helmet, but he was ready for Pollock very, very quickly and uh, that's outstanding fast bowling. Pollock's fourth wicket, and McLean, a good innings by him, gone for 28, caught voucher bull Pollock, it's 255 for eight. Kurt Ambrose is the new batsman, after the dismissal of Nixon McLean. Oh, that might have been caught. It's gonna run away down towards the third man boundary. Gary Kirsten trying to get round there, cut it off, but, uh, I think it is four runs, it is indeed, and this will be interesting to see. It went between wicketkeeper and slip, first slip. I think it might have been Boucher's catch. In all fairness to all and sundry, it uh, dropped short. Boucher did very well to try and save it. Very awkward indeed for both keeper and slip. Appeal for LBW, but I think we'll find that might have been going down the leg side. Courtney Walsh is quite happy to get to the non-striker's end. Ball which went through him a while ago seemed to die, and uh, that's the one uh, the, that brought the appeal. You can see going down the leg side there. Is he caught? He is. That's the end of the innings. Well, Ron Lewis again tries to have a go at Alan Donald and he succeeds in pulling it from well outside the off stump straight into the hands of mid-on and uh, the West Indies innings has come to an end with the addition of only 12 runs from their overnight situation. And the South Africans have wrapped it up as they were hoping to do. You really should have cut that. Had to drag it from a long way outside the off stump. Hit it pretty well, but found mid on. But he had to drag it from far too wide, as he did to the previous one. Cut shot may have been the better option. But he goes for 12. Useful innings by Roy Lewis. And the West Indies, disappointingly, ball out now for 261. So South Africa doing a very good job in just over half an hour of the second morning. Uh, wrapping up the West Indies innings, taking the last three wickets, but just 12 runs added by the West Indies. McLean taking his score from 23 to 28. Ambrose a duck, and Lewis, the last man out, caught by Tobruga at Medan off Donald for 12. 261 all out. 
thanks mainly to the partnership between Chanderpaul and Hooper of 91 and then Chanderpaul and Williams putting on 45. A few useful ones down the order, but the innings folding very quickly on the second morning. Mainly due to some tremendous bowling again from Sean Pollock, who got those first three wickets at the start of the test match and adding two more to take five for 54 from 23. Donald took the last wicket. Good support from Cullis, Tabrooker and Simcox. Off the mark. Always a nice feeling. Gary Kirsten wanted the run and Adam Bacher very correctly sending him back. The gully was roaring around there um, and uh, there was certainly no chance of a, of a run. But uh, the height of the West Indian bowlers and he slips but it's, there's no real difficulty because uh, he was only a couple of meters down. Another good stroke. Hits it into midwicket. Nobody there, as Robin pointed out earlier. So there's at least two and probably three. Three it will be. This is Walsh. It's a good shot from Kirsten. That is his strong area. He normally hits it just a little more backward a square, which will indicate the pace of the pitch. But the first boundary for the South Africans. Yes, Robin has seen Gary Kirsten as much as anybody, and he will know that uh, Gary Kirsten, when he hits the ball like this, he's playing well, because when he doesn't, his bottom hand comes in a bit much, and he hits it backward of square, uh, sort of inside out, as it were. Here, look at that beautiful stroke in front of square, and uh, that will give him enormous confidence. That's a tremendous delivery and out. Well, that levels it. Courtney Walsh now catches Malcolm Marshall as the highest wicket-taker of all time. Disappointment for Adam Bucker, and the West Indies have struck. Yes, a brilliant delivery. Adam Bucker's feet not really in the right line, but look there, it's straightened on him and, uh, in fact, left him a little bit. The wicket-keeper getting his first catch and uh, David Shepard having no real problems in giving that one out. So Adam Bacher leaves for one, and the South Africans score ten for one. New man in, Jacques Cullis. We got two left. South Africa's number three, established himself in that position now. That's runs. So three to Gary Kirsten. Well, he's hit that well for nothing. He gets back. It's beautifully picked up by uh, Walsh. That's unlucky because it was a good shot, full face of the bat. And he really hit it crisply and sweetly. Look at Courtney Walsh. Fantastic. Look at that. Behind his back, switches from left hand to right, underhands the ball in. I think he would have been home if he'd hit the stumps anyway, but uh, terrific uh, hand-eye coordination. Oof. That is fantastic shot from Jacques Callas. Second ball from Nixon McLean and punished. Yes, I'm not just a long hop, really. I'm not quite sure that he intended to drop it short. If he did, it didn't get up as much as he would have liked. And uh, Jacques Callas had plenty of time. Oh, it's got through him and four runs. Well, there's a perfect illustration. He finally gets one to be in sort of vaguely the right area normally you find when the batsman plays or well, gets beaten like that it's the extra pace that beats him more than anything and that came back quite sharply at a fair pace fortune favors Jacques Callas on this occasion yes that didn't it back
and it's well hit nice and straight and the chase from Ambrose two runs Nixon McLean is the man operating from the caller drive in and this is played away very nicely backward of square on the onside perfectly timed and it raced away to the boundary quite an interesting approach here from Jacques Callas he really hasn't played a single defensive shot against Nixon McLean um, he's obviously trying to assert his dominance this was a really good cricket shot Turned away again, nicely on the onside through the mid-wicket area. Backward square leg chases. They've got two. And so six runs from the over. South Africa, 36 for one. This is a beautiful shot, but Chanderpaul equal to the occasion in the covers. Tremendous stop from him. Yes, he's been in the gully earlier on, now moving in front of square. Look at that. that is the best goalkeeper save you could see. Short and cracked away for four runs. Just in front of square. Gary Kirsten very quick onto that. There's nothing better for a batsman than to be able to hook a quick bowler and specifically one of such class as Courtney Walsh in front of square with that position. Gary Kirsten is certainly looking in awesome form. Oh, and that was clever bowling from Courtney Walsh. It's one of the oldest tricks in the game is to move the short leg back onto the boundary at square leg, set the trap and then bowl a, a Yorker or a very full delivery. And that's exactly what Walsh did there and it caught Gary out. It's the second time. It's the only time that Gary Kirsten, in fact, has looked a little bit shaky is uh, on that slower ball. Soft hands again, all the way along the ground, past the third slip and that backward point tidies up. Two runs, though, to Gary Kirsten. So six runs again from that over, 43 for one. This is nicely driven through the covers. Beautiful shot by Jacques Cullis, and it's gone for four. Once again, McLean tried to conduct the double bluff and uh, had the man out there, and Brian Laura was moving him around. Then he tried to dig it in and bowl a Yorker, uh, but he didn't get, get it quite right. Instead, it was a half volley. Jacques Callis played it beautifully because it was leaving him off the seam as he played. But look at the extension of the bat through the ball, and that cut off any movement off the seam, and he got a beautiful boundary. South Africa moving on to 47 for one, and he's, as you can see, got 21 of them. lap shot from Jacques Cullis and he'll be able to get two for it backward square leg has to run away to his right nice bit of fielding brings up the 50 peel for LBW here and umpire Mitchley says no I think very yeah. important just watch the line from which Nixon McLean is coming first important thing is he's he's about in the middle and it was short therefore the ball had to pitch outside leg stump and this is one of the reasons fast bowlers go around the wicket to left handers because it was a good delivery it beat the bat and uh, that there was no chance of the LBW that's a good shot nicely timed I don't think it'll get all the way no it'll just be two That's nicely played. That will go for four. That's a superb shot. He knows the man is back behind square. He doesn't try and hit it too hard. It's just a short arm jab through mid wicket. But he's perfectly positioned for the shot. Nicely into line.
61 for one. It's a good shot. That will get there, I think. There's a chase for extra cover. He might haul it in. And, oh, a bit clumsily, but he does it. And saves an extra run. It's only three. In fact, I'm not so sure that he's, the field is not indicating four to the umpire. Well, isn't that nice to see? Shepard wasn't looking around, wasn't looking to ask. And it, as I say, a bit clumsily, and there, he just touches the rope with his toe. He then throws it in. He signals to umpire Shepard. Shepard signals four, and then Shepard himself just gave the fielder a gesture as to, as to say thank you very much indeed. Oh, what a good delivery. There's appeal for LBW here, and I think it's quite a good appeal. Well, that's the classic one. Pitching around about off stump, straightening. And really, that's close. That's very close. It's going to shave the off stump, if, in, if anything. Benefit of the doubt going to Jacques Cullis. That's four. Classic cut shot from Cullis. Yes, if he hasn't got the googly, then as a batsman, what you're looking to do against the leg spinner, anything slightly short, you want to be quickly onto the cut and uh, take full advantage of, of, of it. That's runs. shout very close but umpire Cyril Mitchley unmoved and characteristically sort of turns away there's the sweep and uh, it was straight it's a good shot well once again Gary Kirsten I think you can see when Gary Kirsten is playing well is when he hits the ball nicely straight through the covers this again was a shot which went in front of square 76 for one Oh, that's a beautiful delivery. The edge will run down towards the boundary, but not all the way. Ah! That uh, pitched outside leg. And uh, I think there were two sounds. I mean, you could hear Cyril saying pitched outside leg. Uh, a long way outside leg. No, missed his bat for sure. Just two sounds that hit both legs. Full toss, and that'll bring Jacques Callas four runs and take him to within three of a half century. Not missing out, cannot let those sort of balls go by without being punished, and he does so here. Yeah, that again looked as though it was the top spinner coming out of the back of the hand. Watch if you can see, and this is what Jacques Callas would have seen, and uh, he didn't need to look too much because it was a full toss. Whoopsie! My goodness, that just took off, off the glove. Now that was a brilliant piece of bowling. It was a much quicker ball which made Jack Callas think it was short, then it fizzed through, got the glove and he was lucky not to be caught. End of the over, 85 for one. Here's Walsh to Callas. And that's Callas' half century. Just over two hours he's been batting Jacques Callas and acknowledges the generous applause from around the ground with a wave of the bat. Well, that's hit beautifully in the middle of the bat for Gary Kirsten and that should reach the boundary. No. Well, it would have. It's a good yeah. chase by Wallace. And a huge throw. 94 for one. Good shot. 
Gary Kirsten, and this might well run away to the boundary down at third man. And does indeed. Well, that must be a little bit frustrating for Lewis because he's tossed it up into that rough outside the left hand, is off stump, and it hasn't gone exactly where Gary Kirsten has aimed, but it's gone away for four. Yes, he's here. Gary Kirsten decides to open his shoulders. It's in the air, but uh, Fielder could not get underneath it. And he gets away with it. A miscue by Gary Kirsten. He's caught. He's caught at second slip. Very good catch indeed. Just thrown away. And Jacques Cullis is the second South African wicket to go down. He's gone for 53. It's 102 for two now. Just a bit of extra bounce from Courtney Walsh, and that's why he has become the leading West Indian wicket taker. A brilliant catch by Williams at second slip, moving low to his right. Well, it's normally Carl Hooper that is at second slip. Brian Lara is at uh, the first slip position. But with Carl Hooper off the field, it's Daryl Cullinan strides to the wicket at the demise of Jacques Cullis, who was batting so well on 53 and was brilliantly caught by Stuart Williams at second slip. So he just whacks it away for four. Well, I was starting to mention earlier how Cullinan could be a crucial part of the South African batting in this series, more for the fact that he can play the quicker men as well as anybody. Better, and here he's got another one away. This might not quite reach the boundary. Chander Paul is chasing hard after it. They're going to get three. said Walsh at Cullinan is he caught down the leg side no says up oh he's given him out it took a long while I think he was waiting for Cullinan to walk which he didn't do and then umpire Shepard said no mate I know you've hit it on your way and Walsh strikes again well I think the slow motion replay will show that this was the correct decision and if you notice Shepard's uh, umpire Shepard's arm it came out initially, then he thought, you know, he was a bit undecided, and finally, I think, was turned by the reaction of the West Indian uh, fielders. But you see quite clearly here that I think this comes off the face of the bat, and a good decision in the end. Well, the crowd watching on the big electronic scoreboard don't think it was out, uh, but we'll get it again in a moment. Nelson has struck 1-1-1 one, one, one for three. Captain Hans Kroner comes to the wicket. It's a good shot from Kirsten. He timed it nicely. I think it'll go all the way for four. No. Ball almost slowed up as I said that. So two more to Kirsten. He's begun to found the middle, find the middle of the bat a bit more often just recently. 116 for three. All the score wants it past the fielder. Courtney Walsh just affording Kirsten a little bit too much width there. And it's not the half folly by any many means, but he's able to let the arms flow, let the arms and the back get away from his body. And he's been there long enough to be able to middle it. Kirsten on 49 make that 50 it's been a good solid innings from Gary Kirsten he worked hard through a period when it wasn't all going for him and deservedly gets the applause of this wondrous crowd just a couple of fault shots uh, twice against Lewis he hoiked him or tried to hoik him from outside the off stump once he missed and it went past the keeper the googly and then he just managed to clear mid on with a skied miss hit but apart from those 
he's been very solid indeed. Typical Gary Kirsten innings. That's a good shot. Down the ground, no one's going to affect. Oh, yes, they are. Every time I say it's going to go for four, the ball slows up and it's almost stopped. Just rests up against the rope. So it is four to Cronier. And a very fine stroke indeed. A good straight drive. 129 for three. Nice timing. Good balance. Kirsten wanted three, and uh, his captain said no, and his captain was right. He's got that away as well. That might go all the way. Yes, it will. So Kirsten beginning to stride forward now since he went past his 50. And the end of quite an expensive over. 135 now for three. Starts with a full toss and it's smashed away for four. Manner from heaven for Hansi Cronier that. He's a good player of spin bowling. And this is quite a brave move to bowl Lewis to him. But anybody might have been able to dispatch that for four. Yes, certainly Hansi Cronier didn't bother to get his feet into too much of a position. He just stood up and whacked, and whacked it through the covers into the gap. Good luck, Riley. will be at least three of them brilliant running there by Hansi Cronier he knew there was a chance and uh, unfortunately for Gary it wasn't cold runs we heard a nick we heard the sound and you can see him glancing up at uh, Cyril Mitchley I wonder whether he did get a touch on this no he didn't it was the pad quite thick onto the pad so the right decision by Cyril and that's possibly why it also never carried to the boundary. Three leg buys. Okay, okay. This is a cheeky single. Nicely played by Gary Kirsten. Away through mid-wicket. This is racing away towards the boundary. Seemingly almost gathering pace there. That's how well he timed it. Gary Kirsten has been particularly solid today and uh, if there's one particular shot that he's played well it's this one he's getting in so well into position for it he times it well and as Trevor has just said he didn't really hit it at all but the timing was so good that it raced away for four he's out oh dear that's a bit unfortunate for Gary Kirsten it wasn't a particularly good delivery. He looked as though he was going to guide it away. Back with a square on the offside, but it must have got the bottom edge and down into the stumps, and Gary Kirsten is out. Yes, we can't really say bad luck because uh, he's played this shot a couple of times and has looked fairly vulnerable, and here he goes again, playing it across the line, pushing your bottom hand through, but nevertheless unlucky because as he drops his bat, in dismay uh, at the ball hitting the stumps it bounced down it could so easily have missed the stumps and uh, this very very valuable innings of 62 ends with Gary Kirsten and the score 154 for four cry of support from the crowd for the arrival of John T Rhodes ever popular there he goes it doesn't often deter him, the leg spin, and he gets this one away nicely, but there's also a man on the boundary at backward square leg, so he only gets a single. He was thinking of coming back for the second for the throw. He's that quick that he can often beat the throw, but he, he slipped at the end of the pitch. Yes, I don't have too, too many doubts as that he would have gone for the, the, the second run, but whoops, there he goes. This is going to go away through the covers. Seemed as though there was some pad there first and then the bat. 
So it must have just flicked the pad and then come onto the middle of the bat because he gets three runs for it. <laughs> His pads have got a very good meat on them. But if you watch this closely here, the, it was a half shot for LBW as the ball comes in, hits the pad first and then very firmly onto the pad. Three runs. <laughs> Grows, and that's a full toss. And dispatched to the boundary, just as it should be. shot full toss but uh, they still got to be put away Rhodes does it well it! Oh. Oh. inches away from a diving Lewis it just seemed the ball seemed to stay in the air for so long now look for two and get it comfortably If he gets that past him, he'll get a couple, but he doesn't. What's well fielded, and just uh, tweaked a shoulder there. Cronier's turn to get the sweep in. The man isn't there for Hansi Cronier, so he's able to get two. He moves on to 25, and the score to 183 for four. That's nicely timed. These two very quick between the wickets. Oh, that might be out. It is, yes. Nixon McLean strikes. Bit of pace, full of length. Rhodes caught on the back foot, and uh, I don't think much doubt about that. Well, you said it, Robin. He's, I think the secret here is that the pace beat him, caught on the back foot, hasn't got time to come forward again, caught on the crease. Bit of movement back at the right-hander, make sure that he misses it. And I'm afraid jaunty has gone for 17. South Africa now, 185 for five. Yeah. Sean Pollock, 25 years old, 26 matches. He's just five runs off a thousand runs in test cricket averaging 32 pretty useful coming in at number seven it's a long race for mid on he'll haul it in though and good running by Hansi Cronier good cricket all round Second run. This is Kirtley Ambrose and uh, Kirtley Ambrose bowling from the corner drive end. What happened to this one? What Trevor has just said about the break almost came true in that uh, Hansi Krunia has to start again. His feet didn't move all that well first ball. Again, there is, I think, some bat there. There was an appeal, certainly. The ball went along the ground, but I think they might have felt that it was some pad first. I'll have to have a look. Certainly he's now looking less confident than he was before the break. Well, there was a shot, and yet it didn't even seem to touch the pad with the outside edge of the bat. Once again, no carry in the delivery, and what a face. I think he should go for the Oscar there. There's so much pain in that expression. Nicely played through mid-wicket. Madonna has to go and retrieve it. There's time for two. And those two runs take Sean Pollock past 1,000 runs in Test Match Cricket. That's always a good milestone to get to. Average of 32, not bad for a fast bowler. Oh, 
Well, that's not a very good shot at all by Sean Pollock. A little rush of blood there. And uh, he gets away with it. He gets a single. It brings up the 200. But he was a bit lucky. It was not a good shot. Ends the over. 200 for five. No ball called. Don't know whether it would have changed the shot, but he certainly had a go at that. Gets a glare from Courtney Walsh. Big appeal here for LBW, but I think there were two noises, and one of them might have been bat. And Kirtley Ambrose knows that if it hadn't been for that, I think uh, it was all over. Good bowling. Sean Pollock's looking a little unsettled. Fine bowling, of course, a bouncer, and then this one right up in the block hole. Thick edge, and uh, once again, the toe end of it. Field for LBW again. I think it might have been going down the leg side. The leg by. This is good bowling by Walsh. Classic over. Really fine bowling. This is Ambrose now. Another good delivery. It played well, though, by Sean Pollock. It was uh, the attempted Yorker, but he dug it out well and got some timing on it, too. And as a result of it, he's been able to get three runs straight back past the bowler. Ansi Cronier has come for the run. Pollock sent him back. Fortunately, there was plenty of time for Hansi to come to a a halt and get back which is an indication that there was probably a run there anyway and a third man just be the one for Sean Pollock so he will keep the strike at the end of that over 207 for five Nicely played, just backward of the square leg umpire for a single. 14 Walsh, who's taken more first class wickets than any other player that is involved. 1,625, an average of 21.9. A healthy haul of 106 wickets in the English County game, of course, uh, helped him. Alan Donald second. So the end of the over, 208 for five. Ooh, now how close was that to rolling onto the stumps? Seen it happen once already, like Gary Kirsten got out in this fashion. Yes, Ambrose has really been disciplined in this spell. He hasn't wavered at all from perfect line and length, just short of a length, just on about just outside the off stump. Oh, no. That is not a very good shot. Sean Pollock. I really... He actually had a strange innings for him. Uh, he normally plays with a very straight bat, but that's not the first time he's played that stroke, and he must be kicking himself. Courtney Walsh isn't. Well... I don't know how much of this wicket you can attribute to Ambrose as well. Ambrose has tied Sean Pollock down. He hasn't given him anything to hit. And uh, very similar to delivery to the one that nearly caused his dismissal earlier uh, sees the end of Sean Pollock. 209 for six. Pollock gone for 11. Mark Boucher. 21 years old. Highest score of 78, so uh, pleasant memories of this particular ground. That was in that magnificent record-breaking stand with uh, Uncle Pat Simcox. This time, Cronier pulls the ball away through mid-wicket in a controlled manner, one must add. 
That's nicely timed. It'll be a chase for cover point, but he won't catch it up. That's a good stroke from Hansi Kronje. Just that little bit of width off it. Kronje takes full advantage, though. He actually times this pretty well. Sparing dive from Chandrapur. That squared him up, but he's got runs here. Probably two. Two it is. Bouncer. Little uh, look from Walsh. He's got those eyes that can give you quite a meaningful look as well. Sylvester Clark also had similar type of glare. Imagine if Mira Litterin was a quick bowler. <laughs> <laughs> Umpires are getting together. Sun has uh, sort of gone down behind the stadium, as it were. We can see the main uh, the electronic scoreboard is still lit up in sunshine. But in the middle, not good. And that might well be it for the day. It's been offered. Boucher and Cronje are happy to go. Sun shines on the stand on the far side of the ground. But where they're actually playing, the light would obviously be as it was when they last went off, I would say. And that's probably what Brian Lara is asking Cyril Mitchley. Probably saying to me... Stand. Absolutely perfectly balanced and uh, we're really in for a fantastic day's cricket. Let's take a look then at the highlights of the third day. Courtney Waltz. But here he is with the first ball of the third day to Mark Boucher. Now that's got past mid on, be more than one here. Certainly three, but it is in fact four. Yes, well played from Mark Boucher. It's a full toss um, for sure, but he does well to guide it past mid on. It's the end of the over, 2.23 for six. This is the last ball. Yes, yeah, Nixon McLean, McLean in this over, just straying a couple of times now down that leg side. Always an element of luck that this goes fine enough, the leg glance. When you get the boundary, you can't intentionally play it as fine as that. One thing about Boucher, he's always very positive in his movements at the wicket, generally. That's in the air and out. Top edge, it was an unnecessary shot, really. We're just three overs away from a new ball. It's always a risk, especially against the leg spinner. Off spinner, not such a risk. And Boucher perishes. Yes, sometimes habits of one-day cricket creep into the test match game. And as you said, Robin, probably not the best shot to play in this situation. Always a chance that the top edge might come into play. Leg spinner playing against the spin. So, South Africa now, 229 for seven, Barch Boucher out for 12. Tremendous roar from the crowd as Pat Simcox comes into bat. Oh, that's well bowled. Now, that's interesting. He's given it not out. There was cries of catch it to start with. He didn't nick it. Did it hit the pad? Well, so definitely it a noise. Definitely a noise, Robin. And uh, initially, I thought maybe it didn't carry to the keeper, but and I think uh, I think it but just bounced. Check whether he hit it first. Yep, looks like he might have got a little scratch on that. Not 
not out, says umpire Shepard, and over 2.30 for seven. Out, inside edge, back onto the off stump. And that is a big breakthrough for the West Indies. Cronier goes, and now I think they might take the new ball. Well, this is a crucial bro for the West Indies, and Hansi Cronier must be devastatingly disappointed because he's grafted hard, and I'm sure he would have liked to push on with another 20 or 30 himself. But Ambrose rewarded for some extremely accurate bowling throughout the innings. He's out for 41, and South Africa now 230 for 8. Alan Donald makes his way to the middle, and he knows that not every delivery is going to be in his half. And a huge appeal. I thought I heard the ball at the stumps. No? Did well to get forward, first up. Good bowling, too, full length. Good bowling, and uh, what saves him is that I think he manages to get just outside the line of the off stump, and uh, you actually do hear um, umpire Sir Mitchley explaining that to uh, the bowler. Just in the air a moment, but uh, past the short leg, Philo Wallace, and uh, they're able to get two runs. a nasty one this is the problem for somebody like Alan Donald who's not really equipped to face up to this sort of thing great fast bowlers with of course the new ball and the danger for South Africa is that he might have hurt that bowling hand yes he's really in a bad position and uh, it got on the end of the fingers now we're seeing a lot of batsmen these days wearing that extra padding uh, to protect the the index finger and the middle finger of the right hand. Watch what happens here. He gets into a terrible position. The ball doesn't bounce at all, but he leaves his hand there. And uh, that's exactly where it hits. So now he's got some discomfort. Oh, he's given that a belt. Nothing wrong with his hand with that. Four to Donald. I don't know what you're talking about, uh, Gerald, about x-rays and that type of thing. <laughs> it's just a, a little knock on the, on the thumb. Bang through the offside, full swing of the bat, had the width to go for it, and clobbered it. Just short or taken. They're claiming the catch. Umpires Shepard and Mitchley are going to consult. Donald is standing. Ridley Jacobs believes he's got it. And umpire Mitchley asks for the replay. Wonderfully taken. Whatever the outcome is, wonderfully taken. Got the glove under it. And it looks pretty good from that replay. What a wonderful catch by Ridley Jacobs. Umpire, the third umpire will have to determine. We'll have another look here. Very low, dying all the time, but Ridley Jacobs seems to have got his glove underneath it. That is just fantastic athletic take. Clutches it to his body. Now, third umpire, Rudy Kutzen, called into action for the first time to make this decision, and that's just out of the shot for him. There he goes. Seems to be there. Yeah, he seems to have got it. Yes, so he has. What a wonderful catch. He took one yesterday down the leg side. Ridley Jacobs coming into the test side at the age of 31. They've tried a number of wicket keepers. And congratulations for him all round. You will not see a better wicketkeeper's catch than that. Donald goes for seven. It's 243 for nine. David Tabruga is 21. He bowled 
with great confidence and uh, composure. But uh, now he comes out as South Africa's last man. Oh, he's hit that well, Simcox. The uh, fielders are all out in the deep. And Simcox can comfortably take two. Oh, that's in the air. Is there someone underneath it? No. Drops into no man's land. Lara coming in from deep mid-wicket. So 15 love to Pat Simcox and a single. Firm drive, they get a go for a few here. In fact, they'll get four. Terrific shot. Walsh didn't agree with you. But it really was. And if you are going to keep the strike and not take the singles, the best way to keep the strike is to hit fours. There are a few better players down this end of the order in this type of situation than Pat Simcox. He's done it for many, many years for every side he's played for. He'll take one here. Played. Well, it's uh, fun and games at this end of the innings. 251 for nine. Wait, wait, wait. Again, no run taken. Oh, well played. He's dug that out and it stayed in the crease. Well, no one else is going to come and fetch it. It's the best entertainment the crowd have had for the day. Pat Simcox in with the last man, and Kurtley Ambrose and Courtney Walsh trying their damnness to remove him. <laughs> Pat Simcox uh, is uh, engaging in a little chatter with uh, one or two of uh, the commentators through the stump microphone, having a chat with uh, his former teammate, Farney de Villiers. He had 10 no balls yesterday. That's his first today, Ambrose. No, no. And Tabruga wants to get off the market test cricket. Simcox says no. Well, there's an illustration of that. One ball left in the over now. And he dealt with that very well, David Tabruga. Sets off once his first run. Simcox says no, no, no. Got that one away. And four. Well, well, well. It's the captain down at backward square leg. Beg your pardon. Apologies. Floyd Reaper, in fact, it is. Substitute. And a really a bad miss. Not only has he given away four here, but also he's allowed Simcox to keep the strike because they were running whether they would have continued with it is another matter but it really was a slack piece of fielding by the substitute now they'll take it Simcox might even be tempted into a second he'll be risking it I think it's Pat Simcox having a laugh there as well. Oh, sharp turn. He's heaved that away. And he's put him down at long on. And I've got confused with the running in the meantime. So for the first time it leaves to Brugger with five balls to face 
but the bottom line is that should have been out. Almost never had to move one meter, Nixon McLean, and then suddenly it dropped, and Kurt Lee Ambrose is not a happy man. But in the meantime, as Robin says, the batsmen have got a bit confused. Pat Simcox was almost on his way, and now David Tebrugge is having to face. Tebrugge off the mark. Not that he wasn't off the mark twice before, but uh, Simcox had to turn him down his first run in Test cricket. It's always a special moment. The frustration is enormous for Curtly Ambrose. Really respectable looking stroke. well bowled and very well played it was an incredibly good Yorker this fury of Kirtley Ambrose now being unleashed and it really was venomous it was so quick it, look at it dug out there brilliantly would have broken his toe if it hadn't lifted his leg to dig it out <laughs> well, I don't know whether you heard um, <laughs> what I heard. Well, that must have been Afrikaans as well. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Simcox wanted two very badly, and uh, Tabruga rightly turned it down because they wouldn't have got. He wouldn't have got back for two, and uh, Patrick was a little upset. All of our statisticians behind us here have been asking me why. They don't try and get twos, and this is exactly the reason. When the batsman hits the ball towards the outfield like that, you never know quite how quickly the field is going to get in or the ball is going to run to him, and then you don't get the two, and suddenly the pressure is back on. No, no yes, two. Tabruga's taken over. Well, <laughs> this is brilliant. This is brilliant. The one thing about David Tabruga, he's got confidence. It's 266 for nine. Not even referred. Simcox knows as yes. well. So it all ends in a run out in the end, and rather sadly so. Umpire Mitchley gives it without referral. And Simcox had no problem with it. And this is why it's way short. Yes, un unfortunate that, wasn't it? Because uh, uh, the innings were starting to look very exciting. And David Tabruga was playing so nicely, but now South Africa all out for 268. Details of the South African innings in pursuit of West Indies 261, and I think they'll, generally speaking, be disappointed that they didn't get a greater lead than that. Contributions from Kirsten 62. Cullis played beautifully for his 53. Dogged performance from Cronier on 41 there and contributions in the lower order but nothing that substantial but a useful last wicket partnership between Simcox and Tabruga. Those are the partnerships, 92, the one of significance, Kirsten and Cullis and then nothing really significant from there on and to get a decent lead that's what South Africa required. West Indies bowlers, just four of them used. Lewis did a very good stop job for uh, Brian Lara, but the pick, of course, Courtney Walsh going past Malcolm Marshall's record. Four for 66, Walsh. McLean, McLean, I should say, two for 66, and Ambrose, good support with two for 63. So there is the match situation. West Indies all out, 261. South Africa, a modest lead of just seven runs. We pick up uh, we pick up the action now in the second over of the West Indies second innings. Well, that's a fine stroke, but wide of off stump, and really he didn't need to play it, but he did, 
and he gets a, a beautiful boundary just behind square on on the offside look at that full flow of the arms this is past jaunty Rhodes, and it's going to be too much i think for some cox well he's done well to get a hand to it but i think it's going to be uh, adjudicated as a four in fact Simcox doesn't even bother to wait for umpire Mitchley good effort from uh, Pat Simcox nicely tight by Lambert doesn't try and hit it too hard just waits for it to come to him it will have to be bad light that decides it and that was a fearsome delivery from Sean Pollock to end his over we'll have a look at it in a moment 15 for no wicket this is a good well-directed bouncer he's straight over off stump and high enough that if he actually had didn't bail out and tried to hit it he would have really got into trouble and would have had great difficulty in trying to keep it down he didn't bail out very well he started to get the head under it but he left the gloves up there and hammered very hard and that's gone for four runs raced past jaunty Rhodes, and he sort of indicated that he hadn't really seen it it was brilliantly cracked yes and i think that's a well it's either a good active performance from jaunty Rhodes, but it's caused the umpires to get together again and discuss the light and i'd be very surprised if they don't go off now well, all the players ask for from the umpires is consistency they went off yesterday for bad light when the sun slipped behind a very big cloud and then they eventually came out again when the sun once more came out there's no prospect of the sun coming through here at the moment the light meter up again and uh, i think this time he is going to offer it to the batsmen so well the crowd don't like it they've come here to enjoy themselves and to watch some action but you really cannot blame the batsman on this occasion for accepting it nothing wrong with the way he saw that though <laughs> no but he's got the benefit of the side screen and uh, everybody who's not uh, such as the point fielder obviously it's a different story for him but he certainly gives that a crack covers being dragged out it hasn't started raining yet but uh, I'd like to get the covers on before it comes because I think when it does come it'll come in a downpour the clouds have been building up uh, from uh, mid-morning. flooding the ground and preventing any, any further play on the third day. Well, going into the fourth day, this match beautifully poised. The West Indies didn't lose any further wickets. 20 for no wicket. To bat on, run scoring is at a premium here. The West Indies then, 20 for no wicket. Let's pick up highlights of this fourth day with the first ball of the day. Now we're ready for the first ball of the fourth day's play. Alan Donald from the golf course end to Philo Wallace. And immediately Philo Wallace flashes at it. Not a very good shot first up on this fourth day. John T. Rhodes at backward point is quickly onto that one. Oh, he's bowled off the inside edge. Sean Pollock strikes again his sixth wicket in the test match. And he's got Philo Wallace in his very first over on this fourth day. Off the inside edge, and Wallace is gone for 14. Four stroke here from Wallace. Uh, difficult to determine what he was attempting. It's a pretty good length ball and he's going back with a cross bat looking to force it through the onside from outside the off stump not dissimilar to the way that hansi cronia got out yesterday to court to kirtley ambrose and uh, walsh go a correction and uh, wallace goes and once more the arm pumping sean pollock has struck for south africa 24 for one wallace goes for 14. the great brian lara the west indian captain to the wicket buzz around the ground the moment he stepped onto the field this is cracked away backward a square but the third man is fairly square himself so he can get around here comes the throw 
and uh, it's not too bad at all on the new man to Brooker this is played very well indeed by Lara through the covers off the back foot and it's a long chase for Jonty Rhodes he'll get there but Lara will get three Unfortunately, that immediately means that the gully is going to go back into the covers. And uh, in order to compensate, the second slip is going to gully. So one good shot by, by Lara, and suddenly the field has changed again. Lara, and Lara had a go at that one, and was up in the air for a moment. I think it came off the thigh pad. Yes, it did. Um, pi pirouetting there to try and put it down to the backward square ball onto him. Perhaps the, the extra bounce as well. The bounce hasn't been all that consistent on this pitch. But with the angle, Lara into the shot. And uh, well, perhaps not misjudging the bounce. Because he seemed to be in position for it. Just got it in the thigh pad, perhaps playing a little bit too late. It looked as though that kept a bit low and you just was talking about you were talking about the variable bounce uh, Tony and that seemed it was a very fast delivery it forced him on the back foot turned him a bit square and I think it kept a bit low and Brian Lara is LBW for seven a big blow for the West Indies huge strike for Donald and really absolutely no doubt about that whatever on the back foot within the crease Donald putting him on the back comes to the wicket top scorer in the first innings with uh, a very studied 74 he goes past the outside edge that wasn't a very good shot from Chandler Paul it ends an exciting over at 33 for two pulled away and over mid wicket for four and that's going to be the secret of batting on this pitch when you get half a chance to score capitalize absolutely this really wasn't a terrible delivery it was slightly short and beautiful shot but of course you must remember Clayton Lambert's stance is almost preparing him for that kind of a stroke he's very strong on it partly because he's so open in his stance oh that's beautifully bold as well Oh, well bold. Now, did he play that or didn't he? I'm going to suggest he did. You're saying that he pulled the bat away too late. Let's watch this one. You can see he's trying to square up a little bit and he plays inside the line. I say he didn't. <laughs> I agree with you. <laughs> and he does a maiden 37 for two. Oh, he goes. I was about to say, well, unless he got bat on that, that's out. We presume he didn't because umpire Shepherd says that's out. Bollock strikes. West Indies now in trouble. What a magnificent delivery. Once again, he was shuffling back, and this time the ball kept, uh, held its line. And watch here, a beautiful ball straightening on him slightly, but inside the inside edge of the bat hit him above the knee roll but he was so far back that uh, there was no doubt in the umpire's mind strand up goes for one now west indies in their second innings 38 for three stuart williams who's come in to bat no carl hooper just yet he was scheduled to come in now but hooper once he was out in the first innings we haven't seen him since now changing the bowling from the golf course in david to Pulled away, wide him it on. Chase for Donald. His uh, warm-up delivery, and uh, and he just spooned it away. He didn't really put too much into it. Oh. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, Rhodes, this is interesting. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Let's have another look at that. That certainly is worth more than another look. Absolute brilliance again by John T. And he pushes it perfectly into the gap. Says, yeah, there's no question. He's going to the wrong side. And look how fast he turns and then lets it go. And he would have just been in. It's a little width and driven by Williams to deep backward point. And two runs to Stuart Williams. Well, that's hit well, and that is going to go down to deep backward point for four runs. He really gave that a crack. A little too much width. Ishakala sometimes is a bit guilty, no matter what his figures might say. End of the over, 48 for three. Oh, a little spite off the pitch there. Bottom hand onto the glove and another excellent effort from Tabruga. 49 for three. Big appeal. I think just outside the off stump there. As commentators, we're very judgmental on umpires, not normally after the third slow, extra slow action replay, but first reaction is that's just outside the off stump. Very just, though. There's pad first and then bat, I think. Well, he's really... Well, this, one is hit, this one has hit him a little bit on the move, uh, Gerald, so it might have, I think it, would, it might have been closer to hit him in, in line with the stumps, but there is a, quite a lot of movement, latish movement, in, although it straightens, and I mean, that's not too bad. I think De Brugge didn't really get into the action with her big appeal. Uh, you see there's, there's certainly pad and bat. Oh, well, that is well bowled. But Lambert played inside. This is nicely driven, but very nicely fielded by that short cover. And this is just the sort of thing that will encourage David Tabruga. He's bowling now for that, and batsman looking for the gap. Now, the moment he starts to play the shot in anger, there's a better chance for the, for the bowler to get a wicket. That's cracked away, and that will, I think, go for four. Not even Jonty Rhodes will catch it. Well, it brings up the half-century for the West Indies, and it's taken them 174 balls in just over two hours to get to this half-century. So, a good stroke. At last, we've seen this morning, and uh, the crowd, which is getting larger all the time, Enjoying the the sun and the warmth, have at last seen something to enjoy. Oh, he's caught, caught at second slip, and De Brucker has got Williams for the second time in the Test match. The young Khartenga strikes, and the West Indies are 53 for four. Stuart Williams is gone for 12, splendidly caught at second slip. A fine delivery, just a little bit of extra bounce and leaving him. And there's that loose shot that we were thinking could happen at any time. Excitement for David Tabruga and West Indies in trouble now. 53 for four. That's nicely played and it'll go for four. It was just a little bit too full and onto the leg stump and he picked it nicely off his toes. Away back with a square for four. Shark Callis trying to get a little bit of extra swing, and it certainly did swing. Just moved to the leg side. He must be strong there with that stance. But he did, did put it away. Very well indeed. 
edged and down towards third man it'll go and it gets there four runs despairing dive it was along the ground for most of the way so no real chance but definitely the outside edge well trevor we've been talking all morning about the logic of having only one slip when the side is, is in trouble with four down not that that was a catch but it certainly if there's be, had been a second slip there uh there would not have been a boundary Played at that one. Wait. Oh, well, bold. That. Uh, it's good running. That is good running. That's a poor delivery and dispatch for four. If you want it to turn away from the left hander, it's got to land first. 71 for four. Well, you haven't seen many of those, a full toss. And uh, well put away by Ridley Jacobs. That's a beautiful stroke. Long chase for Hansi Cronier. He will haul it in. seen many of those today the bouncer in this case the non-bouncing bouncer Lambert oh. and it's uh, certainly made Lambert do something different and I don't know uh, that Mr. Cozier who of course is from the Caribbean was all that happy with that stroke well <laughs> I don't think anyone would have been but he's uh, just got himself into a, a little bit of a mental confusion here oh, Simo. Over. good over interesting intriguing and a maiden 74 for four complete contrast from the figures that he showed in the first innings after nine overs look at this and beautifully played i might add it's got hold of that it's in the air and there was somebody under it and he's wearing a red hat and he's eight rows back so the ball finished 15. what a remarkable stroke it wasn't a hook it was a pickup by ridley jacobs and it went a long way it certainly came off the middle of the bat there's the fellow with the red hat the one with the white one that uh, had to take evasive action remarkable shot look at that pirouette yeah. that's well bowled and what's the decision oh he doesn't have to give one he's off and gone i say it was bo well bowled it was very well caught an extremely good catch by mark boucher i remember alan not taking a catch like that off derek underwood standing up you don't see a keeper very often standing up to a spinner take a diving catch. Might just have carried the first slip. Boucher wasn't going to take that chance. That is a stunning catch. And a crucial one too. Because it gets rid of Clayton Lambert who had hung around for a long time for his 33. And it converts the West Indies into more trouble. 85. Fellow Wallace comes out with uh, Carl Hooper. So Hooper's groin strain still affecting him. Swatted away. Now that would have gone to the backward point, who is currently fielding in the gully, but a bit too short, and a little too wide, and nicely played. Yes, very nicely played because it did bounce a little bit, but he got well on top of it. And played it safely into the ground another full toss and uh, Pat Simcox quite cross about it and the end of the over 90 now for five whip 
kicked away and misfield there say misfield's a little bit harsh One gets used to such a high standard that when that sort of thing happens Alan Donald regards it as a misfield that's for sure yes he made good ground to his left but I think just sneaking underneath him everyone used to shout Sydney when something like that happened Sydney Harbour Bridge Struck away over mid-wicket. Good shot. One bounce four. Well, this is a good shot because he's... Remember, his mobility is limited. He doesn't try and hit the ball too hard. He just knows that there's no one out there. Well, there wasn't. There now is. He locks it out with good timing out into the outfield. Now that's a dangerous stroke. We've seen that played quite a lot in this game and it's brought about the demise of one or two batsmen. Gary Kirsten jumps to mind purely because uh, Jacobs is left-handed. But It's much too close to cut and the bounce of this pitch is not conducive to that stroke. Whoops, a big appeal. I don't think so, but Ridley Jacobs found himself in a somewhat unusual position as he tried to hit that up uh, through mid-wicket. In frustration, he swings the bat again, but uh, the thud of the, the ball against the pad just uh, unsettled him and unbalanced him. There, his weight wasn't on the leg, and it actually wasn't the worst shot at all. The only thing I think that um, may have had an effect was the ball may have pitched outside leg stump. Let's have a look at it again. And probably that is the case. Oh! There was a sound there, it wasn't there. It as though it might have been an inside edge. Another fine delivery from David Tabruga. And yes, no signal from Cyril Mitchley. So that was a chance. Oh, a thick inside edge. And yeah, he just touched it with the bottom edge of the glove. It was a very, very difficult chance. Feel for LBW here. This is a pretty good shot. And the f has the finger gone up? No. Well, the batsman must get very twitchy with umpire Mitchley there because the finger, I think he must have called not out though. And so. Yes, this pitching just out off, outside the off stump, coming back at the right hander. Hits him on the roll uh, as well forward. And if you're going to be consistent, you can't be giving those out too easily. Another shot for LBW. Oh, and that hit him low down. But, uh, I think umpire Shepard might have decided that it was slipping away down the leg side because of the angle from which it had been delivered. Yes, when you, you see how wide he is of the crease, and uh, he's, he's a right-hander, so the ball is coming in sharply from the offside and really that's still got another meter to travel and within that time it's going to slip down the leg side this is a bit of a smash by hooper it won't go to the boundary because he didn't get it well enough but they're looking for the third his runner fellow wallace has got a race but they make it Too short from Tabruga and too wide as well. Beats Jonty Rhodes, but Donald is there to tidy up behind him. There it goes. There is a man at deep mid wicket, but there isn't a man at long on. And Harper's hit that over him, even if he had been there. And the 50 partnership comes up with that blow. He is such a clean hitter of the ball, straight. That didn't go exactly straight. He used the turn on it to put it away. Oh. Oh. Cheekily and delicately played. Well, he couldn't get it later than this. Late cut by Carl Hooper. Known in some places in the West Indies as the day after the Morrow cut. 
so late, taken out of the keeper's gloves. No slip, slip having been moved out. Very delicate. Driven hard through the covers for magnificent stroke. Fractionally over pitched, he was onto it in a flash. Everything into that. And perfectly played. That right leg goes out to meet the ball. Right out it comes. The bat straight through it. Big appeal. Out. Shepard didn't hesitate. Callis strikes. And what an important one it might turn out to be. Well, a bit of a long time for that wicket. Good delivery. And Hooper hopping around. Virtually a a Yorker length delivery. Well, not quite Yorker, but anyhow, brought him forward. And uh, hit seemingly on the back leg. Whatever it was, it was in front of middle. And Hooper goes for 34. Very good partnership, restorative partnership for the West Indies. But the specialist batsman is the one who goes for 34. 148 for six. So the South African supporters here are now woken up from what might have been a, a bit of a slumber as Raul Lewis makes his way to the crease. Edge, good start from Cullinan, very good start. He's gone a little wider at first slip and had to go to his left, which isn't a natural thing for a first slip to... Catch it, oh! Catch it Raul, caught it. Just a word or two from Simcox to reassure the West Indian uh, wicketkeeper that he wants to get him out. And there, straight off the knee roll, as you can plainly see. The catcher didn't get excited. Simcox certainly is now. Leaping all over the place. Twice in succession now, he comes down the pitch. I was going to say leaping like a springbok, but I don't suppose that's the correct analogy with uh, Pat Simcox. It's all happening, but nothing's happening. Just to keep the pressure on, uh, Simcox. A lot of talking going on out there. No, a lot of shots not being offered here. Like it's just fallen, tension up. Yes. Oh, rash shots, yes. and he's got his man. Now, that was actually great cricket. Pressure applied. A few words down the down the pitch. And then a lot of patience from Ridley Jacobs and Simcox snares his man. That wicket is owed to the previous three deliveries and the pressure that was put on and the fact that a wicket had just fallen. Well, perhaps uh, Ridley Jacobs will be very displeased with that. He's played a magnificent innings. He's been out there for almost three hours. And immediately hits out first ball after T. Well, that's an amazing shot, and it's going to bring him, I think, four runs. It does indeed a chase for mid off, but he doesn't get there in time. Oh, what an extraordinary start! Yeah, well, this is real Caribbean stuff. It's the sort of stuff that we, we've been saying and, and, and regretting that we've been missing because of the discipline of the, the batsman hitherto. But look at that first ball, not even a sighter and uh, over the top oh. it goes. Remember, he's a left-hander. The ball could have bounced in the rough. That kept a bit low. We've seen a few do that outside the off stump to the left-hander with the bowler operating from the corner drive end. Bottom edge, one bounce through to the keeper. Well, another extravagant stroke from uh, a batsman still new to the crease. Really trying for a huge boundary there. 
and uh, just getting that bottom inside edge. Trying to hit this too hard. He swung himself off his feet. Oscar Samo, Oscar. Yes, this is all part of Pat Simcox exerting pressure. And look at that movement of Cyril Mitchley's hand, and of course that excited half the crowd. They thought he was putting his finger up. More pressure being exerted by the captain now. He's brought in the gully halfway through the over. Now he's brought in himself in a silly point position. Over. Very good over from Pat Simcox, a maiden, a taxing one. Quite firmly hit by Rural Lewis, but uh, Callas dropped a hand on it. right across in front it just gets it away down the onside and wait to see whether it came off pad or bat Empire Shepherd indicates a leg by oh, suddenly Nixon McLean has a rush of blood again he had one immediately after T he hit the first ball from Sipcox of four Just short of Adam Bacher at mid wicket. A very strange stroke because it was outside off stump. And look how he hits it to mid wicket. So almost thinking again of the, the pull. And that one, uh, no wonder it surprised Adam Bacher. He wouldn't have expected it to fly like that in the air. But uh, in the end, it was nowhere near a chance. This is whipped away. Back with a square on the onside and goes for four. Bad ball from Jacques Culler, straying down the leg side. <laughs> and I think Pat Simcox was glaring at the police dog. <laughs> he thought he might have had a nip in the ankle as he went around there. He watched the police dog will come into play just about now. <laughs> 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 Is that a guilty conscience or something? Peel uh. for LBW. Going on down the leg side, I think umpire Shepard. Little stump. Well, well, that one even more so than the shot that Sean Pollock had under similar circumstances going round the wicket to the left-hander. You can see the leg stump there, you see. Wow. Foot behind the crease. The appeal was comprehensively LBW. Generally regarded. So just the four runs from it, 159 for seven. Simcox bailing out as he <laughs> spotted the dog. <laughs> oh. This is nicely struck through the covers, and it's going to be four runs, I think. Very handsome shot indeed by Raul Lewis. Yes, the impressive thing about the, the players that are new to us so far, Royal Lewis and Ridley Jacobs, is that they both can handle the bat, and that was a classic cover drive. Them 
and look more comfortable. And the score suddenly moving up to 168. So the lead 161, three wickets still in hand. Danny Becker with the third new ball, second new ball. In the air, but wide of the mid-wicket. Hesitation by the batsman. Plenty of time to take a second, but I think the batsman was so alarmed that he spooned that in the air and got away with it. And then there was confusion. Hansi Cronier wasn't quick enough at getting it back, so they ended with two runs. It's 170 for seven. There's the flighted one, and he's out, caught slip by Cullinan. Good bowling. The temptation was there. Delaying the new ball worked, as David Richardson suggested it might. Well bowled, Patrick Simcox. 170 for seven. Yes, well done, but yeah, as much as anybody. And just look at this, a little bit of extra flight, and Nixon McLean just can't resist. It turns sharply out of the, out of the footmarks, and Daryl Cullinan takes a... Simpler catch. And a little bit of ballet. So 170 for eight now, the West Indies. Nixon McLean. Oh, that could well be out and is. Umpire Shepherd doesn't hesitate. Sean Pollock strikes again. And once again, as one wicket falls, so does another. Nine down now. Well, still up as you with the old ball, and what um, Pollock has done exceptionally well here, he's kept it straight and true. Lewis got into line, but it keeps low, comes back at him, and uh, sufficiently to beat the inside edge, plumb in front. Raul makes his way to the crease. This wondrous crowd of uh, almost on their feet. Tremendous uh, atmosphere here at the Wanderers now. The leave. <laughs> 163. The overall lead for the West Indies. Sean Pollock needs just one for 100 wickets. And that's it, I think. Yes, it is. He's got there. Great bowling from Pollock. He scored a thousand runs in Test cricket. He's now got a hundred wickets in Test cricket. So does his father, who you saw applauding him there. He joins him as only two father and son combinations as we watch it. Hitting. Leg stump, middle and leg. And that wicket gives Sean Pollock his hundredth. And as I was saying, only uh, two father and son combinations have done that. 100 wickets in Test cricket. Peter and Sean Pollock and... To come, in fact, bad light first and then rain, rather like on the third day. So that's the West Indies scorecard. A really top-class effort by South Africa in bowling them out today. 20 without loss overnight they started. And uh, South Africa removed five wickets, uh, five batsmen before lunch, two between lunch and tea, and the match uh, beautifully set up for a finish here at 49. Donald to Brugger and Callis all bowled very, very tightly, and Pat Simcox did a fantastic job, three for 43. So that's the match situation, 164 needed for victory. It's going to be a mighty tense day here at the Wanderers. Absolutely perfect day, as you saw there. Blue skies, not a cloud in sight. So here's Kirtley Ambrose on the final morning of the first test to Gary Kirsten. Immediately a very good delivery that had uh, Gary. This is past the short leg. In fact, it's backward a square, and they'll be able to get two runs. So Adam Bacher opens his account. Oh, short and dealt with rather well by Gary Kirsten. Pulls us in front of square and is going to run to the mid-wicket boundary. He's got this one away. Backward of square. He'll get another couple of runs. 
to double his score. They might even get three. In fact, they will get three because uh, Courtney Walsh took quite a long time to get round and pick that one up. Just behind square, down through the gully area, and they'll get two. Running very, very quickly. And Gary Kirsten goes. There was a hesitation there from the batsman for a moment, and no hesitation from umpire Shepherd, and that's a big blow for South Africa. Kirsten, a good occupier of the crease. The West Indies will have felt that as a major breakthrough. Well, this seems to bounce more than usual. You see just by reaction the way he takes his hand off the bat and uh, finds the edge. Wide ball, perhaps he could have left it, but you're trying to be as positive as possible. 14 for one. Makes his way to the crease. Played very well in the first innings. Probably played, handled the situation and the pitch and the bowling better than anybody else. Now, were there two noises? Cyril Mitchley says yes they were now game on very much game on wall strikes to back up Ambrose Adam Bucker on his way and South Africa rocking at 14 for two well credit must go to Brian Laurie here just putting that little bit of doubt in Adam Bucker's mind perhaps bringing the man short in on the offside he tries to cover the off stump to a too great a degree ends up playing outside it gets the inside edge onto the pad and straight to short leg his way to the crease yes, sir. if he needs to hurry there was hesitation in terms of Cullinan and Cullis was very happy to come but Cullinan I still I think might have still been thinking about what the ball did That's two legs. yes he looks at uh, Jacques Bev Jacques call not as as loud as he would have liked I don't think there's one to slip. There might be one now. Yes, there is. Oh, what a... <laughs> That's one way of getting a single. In the air, but past the diving second slip. It won't beat Ambrose at third man. This is the dilemma that uh, Lara has, isn't it? Should there be a third slip there? Well. Looking at that, yes, they should, but. But if there was, that bounced short of him anyway, so I think he's got it right at the moment. Oh, that's a good shot. He's worked that with his wrists from outside off stump through a vacant mid on area. A comfortable three. He played. And just because of that, I'm pretty sure that next time Daryl Cullinan is on strike, Laura will think very seriously about bringing a Madon into position. Oops, that's in the air, and... The West Indians are beseeching umpire Shepard to give Cullis out. Take a look. Already a very, very big appeal, and uh, in fact, it looked as if the bat hit uh, the front pad. That was the big sound they heard. And uh, Philip Wallace coming down, and umpire David Shepherd, very experienced umpire, and that hit front pad. Tension out there. Stop it! Oh, it's a good shot. It's well half stopped, and then a second half stop. There's a big shot from Cullinan. And it's four runs to the deep mid-wicket boundary. It's Cullis going after it. And that will go to the deep mid-wicket boundary. Not quite a sweetly hit, but effective enough and brings South Africa four more runs. 30 for two. And with... Uh 
few runs to get. When you've got uh, two boundaries like that, it really makes the batsman breathe a huge sigh of relief. The tension just leaves the body. Another big shot that's in the air. Walsh is running back. Oh, and he's missed it, but a terrific attempt. In fact, it was Nixon McLean. Well, Daryl Cullinan, not quite there, got right underneath it, sliced it up into the air, and uh, he was somewhere away from it, was Nixon McLean. Just put his hands out and hope that somewhere the ball might land in it and find them. It didn't. Battle before. That's a good shot. Everything right about it. Lee Irvin will describe it to you. Well, the mindset of uh, trying to dominate sometimes does take the element of risk, and Daryl Cullen and started it by hitting over the top, but this really was a class shot, hitting it with the spin, obviously reading it that it was the leg spinner, and then guiding it into the gap. A really classy cricket shot. Rock and roll. <laughs> That'll just be one. I hope. Well, that was only ever one. And the effort to think that there was two nearly turned into an uh, awful mess up with Jacques Cullis slipping. More of that in a moment. 45 for two. There's four of them. What a good shot. Very good shot. Well, this is the reason that Nixon McLean has been held back, is that he tends to be a little bit loose. He drops them a bit short. And on a, a pitch that is so slow, that's cannon fodder. But uh, Daryl Cullen, and full marks to him for getting back so quickly. Look at it. He knows he's looking to hit, and he just leans back and smashes it over Midwicket's head. Ball rolling into the new stand. Of course, Nixon McLean is still loosening up, and uh, it's not going to be made easier by a stroke like that. Another superb shot. It's quality batting, this. It really is. South Africa have passed the 50 mark. He hits it down into the ground, and then it passes the diving Chanderpool. Driven hard into the covers and parried down, if anything. And a quite explosive over. Two beautiful shots from Cullen, and well, actually, four or three and a half. Look at this see how he's really looking to get after Nixon McLean. In fact, all of the bowlers and uh, exert his, his dominance. Big appeal from Cyril Mitchley. Not a convincing one from anybody, really. I thought I might have heard two noises. Just didn't look right, did it? Yes, but it'll do Nixon McLean some good to be able to appeal. And uh, just the fact that he beat the bat will uh, will give him some encouragement and certainly he is hurrying the batsman on a little bit you can see he wasn't far out of the crease in the end because he he went back first and uh, he's by far and away the quickest of the West Indies bowlers he's got the full stride in there but uh, from way behind the popping crease that's a good shot I don't know the timings perfect so it might not get there and doesn't and a quick release to stop any thoughts of a third run. Well, that was excellent fielding by Brian Lara. Pulled away by Cullinan and caught at the second attempt, which made it an even better catch by Brian Lara, the West Indian captain. And that's a big wicket for the West Indies. Right, really ball rushed on Daryl Cullinan he had 35 already but he was trying that same waft over mid-wicket didn't quite get this one in the middle and Brian Lara standing there he's hit, hit the bottom edge of the bat Brian Lara parried it up missed it to begin with and then dived and caught a, a very spectacular catch and one wonders what effect that's going to have on the match 58 for three
It's nicely played by Palace. They'll get two. Chandapur running for it. He's quite quick across the ground. Well, nothing nervous about that shot. Wow. That was superbly timed. It was a half volley, but it was a very quick half volley. That's a nice shot from Cronier. He's hit uh, two or three in the middle of the bat without piercing the field. That does and gets him off the mark. The tactic which worked very well in the first innings against Tansi Cronier was to have a midwicket very straight. And the basically West Indies got him out by frustrating him out, not allowing him any easy runs. At the moment, there's a short leg in, and there's a man behind square on the leg side, saving one. Less than 100 now to win. 98 to be precise, with that single. Just wonder if he had in his mind initially a, a pull shot, then uh, decided against it. You really have just a split second to make those kind of decisions. And dropping the wrist, I thought that uh, just went through his mind that he would make the pull shot, and then there, there it goes. Nicely timed and nicely placed. Very well timed. Pick up two. Again, the timing is good, and Lara will just get there. This time, they'll come back for a third. So McLean's line just beginning to drift down the leg side and clipped away twice in the over now. There's that mid wicket vacancy. And they'll come back for two and then get a third quite comfortably. Chanda Paul is a fielder. Again, Walsh just tending to drift down the leg side. He's, he's had a problem with that uh, line, certainly in the first over on his resumption, and now worked away quite comfortably. And really, the number of deliveries that have held up off a length have been few and far between and I just wonder if Ryan Laura shouldn't consider moving that short leg back into a conventional saving one position at mid wicket and try and tie these two batsmen down and build the pressure that way. That's drifting down leg side as well. Not very far down leg side but enough for Empire Shepherd to say not out again. Walsh just getting that angle. Delivering from wide of the stumps. Double bluff down the leg side. I think Walsh a little bit tired. Players go to lunch. 77 for three. 37 overs have been bowled. Nicely played off the back foot by Hansi Cronier through the covers. At least two. I think they'll be able to get a third. No, it didn't run that first, the first two, particularly the first one quite quickly enough, I don't think. Clayton Lambert is not the fastest in the field, and uh, he took quite some time to get there. And if they run hard, they would have got three. Yeah, sometimes when you play the shot, you can be guilty of uh, immediately summing up that there is only two in it. Uh, and the fact that Lambert was a little bit slow, well, maybe they could have squeezed a third. Off the back foot, and this was nicely timed too, this time by Cullis. And it's going down the ground. They'll definitely be able to get three runs. And so it's been a very productive first over after lunch for South Africa. Seven runs from it, 84 for three. Oh, Hansi Cronier wanted the run. Carlos didn't. It's Cronier's call, really, because it was played backward a square. But no, no harm done. Cronier getting back to his ground, 86 for three.
full toss, but hits straight to Madon, and they're going to run, and they make it quite comfortably enough. Madon just too deep. Yes, Madon is Hooper, and he's a good 25 yards behind the level of the bowler's stumps. And also bearing in mind he's not that mobile, an easy single. Down the track, beautiful hit, straight back down the ground, couple of bounces, four runs. That's Hansi Kronier at his best when playing spin bowling. Very good shot, uses his feet to get to the pitch. But as we were saying just moments earlier, if he's going to bowl from around the wicket into that rough, he's got to bowl it about six inches wider than he is at the moment. You'll see there just pitching in an area where it's, it's, it's not as rough. Lovely footwork, though, by Hansi Kornier to get to the pitch. If he doesn't get to the pitch, of course, it's still going to turn from that rough, even if he hasn't hit exactly the right place, and he could be left standard and stumped. Now they've dropped a man back onto the boundary at long on, so he just knocks it away on the onside and uh, will get a single for it. There's definitely a little more urgency about the South African batting after the lunch interval. They want to get the task done. Oh! And that one very nearly streaked through. So the batsman having had the better of the first half of the over, but uh, good comeback from Lewis, 95 for three. to Cronier, no ball, and Cronier forces it straight into the hands of Midon. Now, do we believe that Hansi Cronier played that shot a little more forcefully because he heard the no ball call or not? Never, Trevor. There's no chance that he can pick up the call. And it is, there's no doubt about the no ball, but uh, things are just not going West Indies way at the moment. A good catch taken from by Philo Wallace. Going through with the shot, forcing it, and straight into Silly Madon's hands. Well, Courtney Walsh, we've seen in this test match, whenever he goes round the wicket, I um, mean, Ambrose, he, he has struggled. He's bowled no balls. Yes, that's bad luck for the West Indies and in, in bad luck for Brian Laura in particular. Down the wicket, lovely shot, but the fielder is there. Courtney Walsh had to move over very smartly. Oh. oh, well. Another run, you see Ambrose still battling going round the wicket. Can't quite get it right. And these are valuable runs, and that could have been five because Hansi Cronier will be very annoyed with himself that he didn't get onto the short one. Yes, yeah, so playing too soon, Cronier. Big no ball. But he sees through with a shot, then the ball comes and hits him in the midriff. Mm. This is smashed away. Through the covers, four runs. And all in all, an expensive over, 104 for three. Well, that was well done by the keeper. He got uh, his body behind it and in one way or another stopped it from going for buys. Very difficult one for him to contend with down the leg side there. Callis will feel that he might have lost out on that, although there's a man backward at square on the boundary and one at mid-wicket. Now he cuts. Laura's there. Jumping away to give himself room. Now that was too short. It's hammered away on the onside. They won't get more than one, though. They might get one for the throw here, and they do. Courtney Walsh and company don't have the arm of a Donald or a Pollock or a Klusner, the South African fast bowlers. And so they, they know that, and they took him on short, swung around, down to fine leg, just a single. It's not going to be the case this time. This is nicely played away through mid-wicket by Jacques Cullis, and it's going to go to the boundary. 
The runs are a coming. Again, very nicely timed from Bajar Kallis. Notice how he opens up on the leg side, places it perfectly. But Walsh, well, the mind is willing, but the, the flesh is weak. There's one, they'll push hard for two, and they'll get it. Well, Nixon McLean's had a, an indifferent time in the field. And this is mainly due to some really good running between the wickets. Oh, that is a wonderful shot by Jacques Callas. Just had to make sure it went in the right area. It did. But uh, playing on the up, four runs. Well, a huge shot, and it's just another indication of the South Africans' confidence now. You don't often see Courtney Walsh being driven on the up like that. Uh, awesome, and, and uh, really one must say that uh, both he and Ambrose, whilst they've bowled well today, um, they've been not that pacey, and particularly on a pitch like this, uh, this is the sort of stroke that one may expect later on in their spells. Bob well, Wilmer, we'll obviously... Bit tense there. It's a nice straight shot for one, if not two. Cronier's interested, but Ambrose has got a good arm. Well, that's in the air. Now, is there someone underneath it? McLean has taken it. And that is a crucial blow. Cronier caught McLean, bowled Walsh. And he's out for 31. And Walsh gets his second wicket of the innings, and it's 124 for four. This one really not again quite short enough, just as Daryl Cullinan erred by trying to pull one that wasn't quite short enough. This one very high, and Nixon McLean has had his trials and tribulations in the field during the match. But look at that, almost unemotional as Walsh sees the captain of South Africa dismissed by th that great delivery. 31 and 124 for four. For four. Big shot, big shot, particularly from the bowler. John T. Rhodes hit between the pads as he tried to turn it to leg. Slightly jumped, and uh, it gave me the impression that uh, the ball was going a bit high, but it, instead it was probably going down leg. It hit him above the knee roll. That's not necessarily vital. Watch here the, from the side on view that you'll see how high it is. It certainly wasn't high or too high, but marginal and probably going down leg. Would have been times it would have been given out there 13 times in 52 dismissals. Good positive shot. One of the strengths of John T. Rhodes throughout his career has been no matter what happens the ball before, it doesn't worry him. He plays each ball on its merits, he puts these things behind him, and look at that stroke there. Really perfect. He's standing still more than he used to when he plays the shot. Brian Lara racing after it, but not able to avoid John T. Rhodes getting his second run. over mid-wicket and it'll run down to the boundary for four well I was fascinated by Brian Laura's field placing before that ball he sent Kirtley Ambrose out to deep long on um, and instead this one was hit squarer by Jacques Callis into the huge vacant area you just saw Kirtley Ambrose in the bottom of your picture as uh, that that shot was played but a nice stroke indeed Simply, there's not enough pace in the pitch and there's not enough pace in Kurt Courtney Walsh for him to bowl deliveries like that. Half a shot because there was a, a little nick onto the pad. Shiv Chanderpaul very quick to save the single. And once again, a little 
bit of frustration for Jacques Callas as he thinks that he could have got some runs from this delivery, angling it into him. Look, thick inside edge, in fact, not a little one, but it was a full toss, and a batsman of this caliber would expect to score at least one run from every full toss. So only 34 needed. As Gerald Cock looks pensive next to me. Only 34. <laughs> and dampen the spirits of the West Indian fans. Here's Lewis around the wicket. And a no ball. Well, this is interesting. In the, in the past, uh, there was almost no incentive for the batsman. Now, it's not often you'd see a, a spinner bowl a no ball, but there it is. It's cracked away. Great shot off the back foot by Callas. He's in rich form now, as South Africa sends victory 136 for four. Yes, he moves on to 47 with that great shot. And Lewis for, has bowled very steadily indeed in the spell. And this was almost one of the first really loose balls that he's bowled. You have to expect that w with a wrist spinner. Oh, that's good technique when one gets the whole body in line. Road scampers down there. How good a run that was, I'm not sure, but he got in. <laughs> well, is John D. Rhodes going to be able to do this when he's 36? I don't know. Oh. Very tight, if it had been a direct hit. Very tight. saw in that shot to Hijak Kallas, he also had to go some because had they thrown to the bowler's end accurately, he would have been in trouble. Pulled away. And four, misfield. Deficit now, 19. As is always the case when you've, when there's 35, 40 runs to get, it still looks quite a way off. But as you get into the teens, well, you can feel the whole mood in the dressing room, the batting dressing room, that is. It just uh, eases, tension drains away. That was. Swept this time, only one. Edge and out. Good catch by Ridley Jacobs going to his right. I fear that it might all be too late for the West Indies, but Rhodes goes. I was just about to say that in this innings, Courtney Walsh hasn't really been able to move the ball away from the right-hander, and true as Bob, he gets with this one to angle in, but then move away sharply of the seam. And a good catch again by Reddy Jacobs. So Rhodes goes. Oh, it's come back an awful lot. Too much, I would say. Well, look at this, it can only have hit a crack, it comes back miles. Pitching a good foot outside the off stump and hitting him well in line maybe with the middle and north. It's come a long way and Sir Mitchie deciding that it's going to continue to do that and go down the leg side. Also a little bit high. No ball called. Pollock gets onto it. And four.
13 to win. On the boundary behind square. No ball, that'll be two to the total. No ball and the single. down to third man Kallis wants second ah oh, that's just that wasn't great cricket I reckon he could have run out either batsman at either end if the throw had been anything like right as it is scores level yes uh, Pollock is a little bit naughty uh, he saunters through for the first one and uh, Lewis seeing that throws the bowler's end but everyone has just gone to sleep a little bit. No one taking the stumps. One to win. And all the cards who've been hovering in the back of the dressing room are now coming out into, onto the player's balcony to see the final single. on the offside, four on the leg. Another ball come onto the ground. Uh, how's he going to play it? Is it going to be a nudge or is it going to be a hit? No. It's hit a full toss. I couldn't believe it. I thought it was four. Then I thought it was just none, as it is. He's turned a full toss straight to backward square leg, and Pollock departs with the scores level. Well... Ambrose. That's it! And a run away. Eventually... 4-4 four, four because some spectator is going to pick it up and that means that it's four so Boucher will be credited with four runs Kirsten and Bacher uh, not quite getting it right at the top of the order but with the support of uh, Cullen and Cronier Cullis played quite beautifully and uh, although Rhodes and Pollock failed at the bottom end Cullis was the man who played the innings that uh, really counted today for South Africa an innings of high class there are the partnerships 44 and 66 for wickets three and four. Those are the vital partnerships. Although a slight wobble at the end, by then it was all over. The West Indian bowlers didn't quite find the assistance they needed on this last day to uh, really make uh, a breakthrough. And Walsh, three for 45, was quite brilliant throughout the match. Ambrose, two for 42. And uh, these two. And the man of the match, well, it was a close call. Callus, two half centuries. But this man, Sean Pollock, with his match figures of nine for 103, including his 100th test wicket, was the man of the match. And Sean, a tremendous bowling performance. Yeah, it's one I'll remember for a while, and um, hopefully I can take it from then into the next test. Not only did you get nine wickets, but it took you two 100 wickets in test cricket. Yeah, I think it's always special to do it in front of the Wanderers crowd there. I was very supportive, and um, when I was running into bowl, try and get down his wicket. The noise was unbelievable. It was really loud and um, I was really happy that I managed to, to get the final wicket. A uh, hundred wickets in test match cricket, a thousand runs. Only Trevor Goddard as a South African has done that before. Yeah, I think uh, that's true mainly through the isolation. I think there's a couple of cricketers, I think Mark Proctor and Clive Rice, who could have all got there if they hadn't been uh, unable to play test cricket. So it's, it's nice to get there, but um, you've got to keep it in perspective too. Now, the viewers are watching all nine of your wickets uh, as we talk. Was there any one that was particularly special to you? I think on the first morning it was special to get a bit of a breakthrough. Um, Clayton Lambert and then came quite hard. And then to, to get Laura was, was quite important because I think he could have had quite a field day on that sort of wicket. Um, it might have made us talk for quite some time. So that was special. And then obviously the 100th wicket was something that I, I really enjoyed because uh, that's got me to my master. Now, those first three wickets um, on the opening morning when the West Indies had won the toss, that, that sort of set the tone for you, for the whole match, really, for some reason. Yeah, as a bowler, it's always nice to get off to, to a quick start, so to pick up three in your first balls does help out. That's what it was for the rest of the match. And um, it did, and you see, 
just the things he was saying, it wasn't his discourse, so if he kept it in the right areas, he only had a chance, and uh, things went my way. Your batting, we won't talk about that shot in the first innings, but you must have been very annoyed in getting out the way you did, and, and it wasn't as though it was a bad shot or anything, but just one run required. I know, it's, I felt like I hit it pretty sweet, and when I sort of turned around, I couldn't believe it was going close to Chandler and then um, he latched onto it, so it was a bit unfortunate, but I don't know, hopefully, hopefully the, the luck runs with me a bit more on the batting of the test to come. It was a bit of amusement, of course, because Simo had decided that he would not be needed with one run to go, and he'd taken his clothes off, and he was putting his special outfit on, ready to enjoy and celebrate the, the victory, and he suddenly had to pad up. Yeah, it's good. You keep the boys honest in the change room. There's no reason why they shouldn't be sweating up there. Yeah. It's definitely to go to keep them uh, focused on the game, because Uncle Pat does like to pack up a touch early. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the five days of Test cricket here from the Wanderers. It really was uh, a fascinating match from ball one when the.